Hello friends out there on YouTube land, Rob Ham here, and today we're going to be talking about this beautiful camera right here, the Instax Mini Evo. This is a fun, hybrid, digital point-and-shoot camera shooting Instax Mini Film by Fujifilm. It is the top of their line in their digital hybrid uh, camera sections, and it's a lot of fun to shoot. I'm actually comparing this to three different cameras, the TL70, the Mini 90, and of course the Evo. If you'd like to see that video, wait for it to drop. It should be sometime around here soon. If you enjoy this type of content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I try to make these videos to be as helpful as possible. And if you would like to continue to support the channel, just watch the video all the way through or hit those Amazon links down below. Okay, this is the five things I don't like video, but we title it something different than that so that it won't sound like that. It's not that I hate the camera. It's just there's some things that are really aggravating. So these are the five things that I find least useful, most aggravating, not helpful about the Fujifilm Instax Mini Evo. Okay, so we've got that. Now, this is an ongoing series. I am still in the review stage of this camera. Of course, I bought it with my own money. I'm using my own film. This is my thoughts for you to share with you how to use this camera. We just dropped a video recently about the five things I love about the camera. And as I continue to go, I will add them to the list and we'll make a five more things. That being said, these are in no particular order other than the order that I wrote them down. And we're starting with my first five. Number one, the menu buttons are not very intuitive. And some of them have multiple functions to do the same things, but those functions change. I'm not going to demonstrate it directly right here. I've got another video that's going to drop that talks about it. But number one, the shutter button itself is actually the OK, go back to shooting button. Normally, if you wanted to get out of a menu, you could half press, you need to full press. Um, it's just a very awkward way to use it. There isn't a real dedicated back button. Because if you are in a menu when you're photographing or doing something, um, we'll go ahead and let it start up right here. It starts up pretty quickly, right? So we go ahead and we get into our menu where we're looking at something, we're looking at an image. Pressing the back button does not get me to the shooting menu. It doesn't get me to my shooting screen. It just brings up the settings that this camera was taken. Pressing OK to go back to the menu doesn't do anything except take me to the menu. The, any of the plus buttons, if I continue to push the plus button, it just cycles through the different view modes. The only way to get back is to half press the shutter, but then full press. Half press doesn't work. You will find that to be very irritating, mainly because we've been conditioned by digital cameras over the years that when you press the shutter button all the way down, it takes an image. Not so here. Generally, when you press the shutter button down, it will take an image, but sometimes it won't when you're in a menu, playback or something like that. That's just not the norm. Usually what we would see is a half press. It needs a real back button. Okay, you're gonna find that to be irritating. I, it's, it's, you pick it up quick, but it will bother you a lot. Um, the print lever is flimsy. So a lot of this that we're talking about right now, this is number two, the print lever is flimsy. Yeah, it's got a great tactile sound and click. Its travel is free and smooth. This gets caught on everything. So when you put it in your jacket pocket, you need to be careful that you put it in an in in a way that it comes out easily, which means that when I tuck this in my jacket pocket, I put it in so that when I'm pulling it out, the lever can't get stuck. If it was upside down, the lever could get stuck and then you pull it out and you've got a broken lever. This lever will break at some point. I guarantee it. It's just going to happen. And that's going to suck. Moving right on to number three. No film simulations. Now, one of the things I like about this camera is that it's kind of like having Lightroom in your pocket. Lightroom-esque features. I could see where Fujifilm is attempting to make this camera such that you've got quite a few combinations, right? They've given us all these different lens effects. They've given us these uh, filters to apply to them. Fujifilm makes excellent cameras, and they have a history of film, not just Instax film. 80 years, I believe, of making film, real analog film. Like my favorite film stock of all time is Pro 400H, right? I mean, that's a great film, right? Where's, where is it here? It's not here. Fujifilm puts film simulations in their top-of-the-line cameras. Now, some of them may not work in this camera due to limitations of the analog printer um, or the digital printer on the analog film. That might be the case. I don't know. But they should have added film si simulations. Where is Acros, right? Instead of monochrome, I don't really like the monochrome setting on here. It's not that great. Where would Acros have been? Could they have created a film simulation that could have given us Acros on this camera? That would have been awesome. What about... Uh, well, what about Pro 400H? What about Velvia? You know, that would have been great to have on here. We kind of get Velvia in a weird way through the um, 
rich print mode, but my point is there could have been, or Provia, there could have been some very nice film simulations on here. That would have given it a really interesting discussion topic, just even add it. That would have just been really cool. I think that's something they might add in a firmware update. They have the capability. Number four, the canvas filter is pointless. Look, some of the filters are no, are no use whatsoever. The canvas filter that you've got on here is just taking up space. I cannot find a real reason to use the canvas filter. And for that, I don't like the implementation of the double exposure filter either. And if we're going to talk about it, the half frame filter, like the Olympus pin cameras, the original half frame cameras, what in the world are they doing? It is terrible. It doesn't just give you a split frame, it puts a big black bar straight down the middle, and then it adds a lo-fi filter over both of the images. That should be a filter we apply to the lens effect of half frame, not one built into both. I don't like it. It's terrible. So yeah, some of the filter effects and lens combinations, I just don't see their point. If you do, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. And number five, <laughs> you're going to love this. Number five, this rounds off my number five for this video thing that I don't like is aggravating. It is terrible at face detect specifically in low light, and autofocus specifically in lower light. I mean, it's just bad. First of all, the camera's not ex exactly a speed demon in the first place. To add that, the, the, the autofocus, face autofocus, you've got to be really close. It's really best in selfie orientation, these kind of distances. It can pick up a little bit more. If you've got a baseball cap on or something that may not see your face, glasses, heck, my sweetheart, it hardly ever draws a box around her face for some reason. It doesn't like the way her face looks on camera, so it just won't find it most of the time. I found that to be true with several people that I've been photographing, and it seems to like my face. I think what's happening is there's contrast from my hair, contrast to the beard makes the face stick out more. And because of that, it's easier for the camera to pick up. At that same time, anything that happens in low light just becomes hit or miss. You are going to miss shots all the time with this. And that's okay, you can take all that you want, but they're going to be blurry. So that means that if you're photographing something that you consider to be Instax critical, which would not be a family heirloom that you want to pass down, but a picture you actually might want to print, you're going to want to check for focus before you just move on. And that means pushing the playback button and zooming in to make sure that the image is actually in focus. So there you have it, my top five things about this camera that I find not helpful, aggravating, irritating, whatever you want things that could be improved. But what do you think? Do you like, do you agree? Do you disagree? Well, leave your comments down below. Do you have some stories? I'd love to hear them. Once again, if you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button to make sure that you get to see the other videos when we drop the big comparison that we're doing right here. And as always, thank you for watching. I will catch you on the flip side. Oh yeah, if this video was helpful to you, please hit those Amazon links down below or the join button down in the community tab. Bye for now.